Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today, I want to talk to you all about a pressing social issue that prevails in our society, the effects of this piece of paper. Raise your hand if you've ever been given one of these as a pastime in elementary school or at home. I see most of you have. This is a typical coloring sheet found in elementary schools across the world. But what if I told you that this simple piece of paper could reveal the harsh restrictions placed upon all of us by society? To showcase what I mean, I ran an experiment. I took this piece of paper and two age groups and told each one to color it any way they wanted. The first age group I tested was the children at an early childhood development center I teach at for kids aged birth to six. As you can see, the results are crazy, hectic, and filled with explosions of color. I then tested some of my peers at my school, and their results were quite the opposite of the children's, with the differences between all the pages being uncanny as the colors lined the page with careful precision. I then wanted to see which one is more appealing, the chaos of colors or the boring replicates. Sorry, guys. It wasn't, fast, it wasn't uh, surprising that most people found the chaos of colors more fascinating. But what does this have to do with you and me? Well, these artworks showcase how society forces us into a box, causing us to color inside of the lines, even when our unique colors allow for a beautiful mosaic of diversity. Now let me ask you all another question. Raise your hand if you've ever changed the way you act to align or conform to those around you. Well, these artworks represent precisely that. The younger child is not aware of what kind of statues are in our society. Yet, as they grow older, they are told to do things how it's supposed to be done, or color within the lines. But how does this re relate to you and me? Well, as a child, this is who I was. I was not your average boy. I'm the boy who played dress up, the boy who went to the park to draw rather than to play basketball. My flamboyant personality never melded well with those around me, and thus, a target seemingly loomed over my head, from being called names to being alienated from different activities. Yet, as a child, I didn't really let this affect me that much. I still remember my sister and I would make YouTube videos and put on fashion shows and dance shows for my family. But, as a child, I was oftentimes very isolated. That's where my guardian angel came in, art. Ever since I can remember, art has made its way into every nuance of my life. As a toddler, I still remember finding a place where I could color in all the nooks of my house, from the foggy windows to behind the closet doors. Looking back at my art now is a little jump scare, but this shock factor is exactly what drew me to it. The ability to construct new realities where I could shift a person's emotion, making them feel happy, sad, angry, or even confused as to what to feel, gave me a sense of power a power that I had nowhere else. You see, my art in elementary school was untied to any structural ideology in society, as should my personality at the time. Yet the very reason I began art started to diminish as I went through middle school, as I started to dive into realism. Around this time, I started to care what other people thought about me, yearning for the acceptance of others, as do all middle schoolers. But as my personality conformed to those around me, so did my art. I didn't realize it then, but the realism seen in these pictures showcased who I was at the time, a teen sticking to what others deemed as successful in art and everyday life. I share my story because it can be applied to aspects of all of our lives. It has become so typical to change parts of yourself to align with those around us, whether it be school, college, or college applications, or now more than ever, social media. Well. Now, in 1955, two European psychologists found the two main reasons for why we conform, and they labeled it the norm effect. The two main reasons were the inf informational influence and the normative influence. The informational influence is when we change our behavior in order to be correct. Have any of y'all ever been in class and changed their answer to align with someone that is seen as smarter or of higher intelligence? Yeah, me too. Well, this can have adverse effects on an individual's perception of the world from believing everything you see on social media to hear on the news to what you see from your friends and your family. The second one is a normative influence. This stems from the desire to be correct and avoid punishment. How many of y'all have seen Mean Girls? Well, sorry to all the fans, but Mean Girls, Katie Heron, is a prime example of the effects of normative influence. As she changes herself 
to align with those around her to avoid getting bullied by the other girls. Although most of the time, we don't even know we are changing ourselves to conform. As humans, we just want to fit in. Who doesn't? Having a group of similar-minded people gives us a sense of security and comfort. That's why we flock to sports teams, rep our cities, and stay within our communities. But although social conformity has this benefit of promoting the social harmony, it can also have adverse effects on an individual's perception and society as a whole, such as promoting the person's able, ability to sacrifice their own ideals to, what, to fit into the group. And in extreme cases, this can lead to groupthink, which is when, an, per, when a person follows the group blindly. I know I was a victim to this. Entering high school, I knew I wasn't myself. I remember constantly asking my best friend, Carissa, am I acting different? And then came COVID, making us all spend time with ourselves. And for me, it wasn't fun. I realized that I needed other people around me to feel good. And that's when I realized that I needed to embark on my own journey of coloring outside the lines. Whether it be conversing with new people, dressing the way I wanted, or even exploring my niche hobbies, I began to change my view on what acceptance meant to me. I began accepting myself instead of letting other people have the power by trying to be accepted. Yet, most of the time, we don't even know we are changing ourselves. And this can have adverse effects on an individual. As John Craker states in his novel, Into the Wild, so many people live with an unhappy circumstances and yet will not change their situation because they are conditioned to a life of security, conformity, and conservation. All of which may give one peace of mind, but nothing is more damaging to the adventurous spirit within a man than a secure future. John knows what's up. Don't get me wrong, I understand the need to plan for the future, but what's the point if you're going to spend the whole time trying to be someone you're not? someone society expects you to be. Now that's a life wasted. Don't get me wrong. However, don't get me wrong, this secure future is what we need. But sometimes we often lose ourselves to what's around us. See, I'm not saying that we should abandon everything society expects us to do. Some are necessary to keep us all going. But analyzing your own statutes and arenas that you may be conforming to is essential to understanding not only who you are, but what your goals are in life as this will unchain you from any self-confidence issues that you may face, from if you're going to be accepted to whether you should wear the black shoes instead of the red ones. Only one person can make these decisions. You. As you dive into your true self, as you dive into your true self, the artists have always explored this idea of diving into our true selves. Pushing past society's expectations of what it meant to be an artist was, was meant by unconventional beauty standards and stepping out of society's expectations. Let me give you an example. Have any of y'all heard of Jean Basquiat? Well, Jean Basquiat was an abstract artist in the late 90s who explored the ideals of the Harlem Renaissance and the Civil Rights Movement, highlighting the experiences of the black community in a predominantly white environment. His art was at first backlashed, but as he kept on going, he destigmatized and allowed this type of art to be able to be seen in society. And this was all possible because he started coloring outside the lines. His journey of coloring outside the lines and exploring himself through art is kind of similar to mine. As I began exploring who I truly was, I began to push past and dive forward to move myself from realism paintings and began to dive into abstract conceptual pieces, things that pulled the viewer in to make their own conception of what the artwork meant to them. And here's a piece I created called Take Your Places. In this piece, the meaning behind this piece is to showcase how society has conformed us to narrow podiums. These podiums represent our position and perception of ourselves in society. And sometimes, when we take a step out of these podiums, it can be seen as social suicide. When you strip yourself away from all the material accessories that dress you today, how much of you has been made to fit this podium? Analyzing yourself is hard, but necessary. I'm still trying to discover who I am, but none of this would have been possible if I hadn't started coloring outside the lines. Your journey of coloring outside the lines may mean something completely different from mine, but it isn't a secret that we all have boxes or limitations that we place upon ourselves. It is only when we recognize these boxes will we, will we be able to move forward. But how? Well, through my own experiences and learning from others, I've created a three-step plan to help you begin to navigate your own journey of coloring outside the lines. The first step is to find a community. 
You know how everyone says, the people you hang around is a reflection of who you are? Well, that's true. By being in an open-minded community of pluralistic values, you will be able to explore traits, perception, or ideas that you may have with unbiased perceptions. The second one is to empower yourself and others. Uh, your own limitations and what you see of yourself significantly impacts the decisions you make. Therefore, having a growth mindset and thinking of the idea of yet, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm on my way, will help you grow and move past any obstacles that come your way. For me, feeling good means doing good. So through a little self-care, a few affirmations, and dressing the way I want to, I'm able to be myself and stay grounded in who I truly am. But it doesn't stop there. It also means empowering others, as coloring outside the lines means holding pluralistic values and keeping those around us to celebrate our differences. The third reason, the third step, is to act daily. You can start right now. When we think of authenticity, it can sometimes become this big abstract concept. But in reality, it is the small step you take every day to make you who you are. You are authentic in your own small ways. And those ideas will make you who you are. Remember, coloring outside the lines helps us all move past diversity and celebrate our differences, as it is only through coloring outside, outside the lines will you be able to find your true self and paint new shapes created by society, creating your own self and being your true self in society. Thank you.